that, today we're going to go over Lesson 410, Understanding Quadrilaterals, Part 1. Lesson 410, Understanding Quadrilaterals, Part 1 again. Please remember to give me your course and section number with all communication because this helps me help you faster. The objectives that we're going to be going over today is that you will learn to use triangle congruence postulates and theorems to prove properties of special quadrilaterals. Isn't that neat? Using triangles to work with quadrilaterals. And you will use properties of special quadrilaterals to solve problems. Some of the quadrilaterals that we've learned about in the past are a parallelogram, a rectangle, trapezoid, a rhombus, and a square. And um, we'll be discussing the properties of each quadrilateral in our lessons today and in lesson 411. But to see a list of the properties, you can refer to the LMS lesson 410 or you may go back and look at your notes because we've already gone over these before. Today our focus will be on the parallelogram. Okay, well, let me get it right. Well, it's not going to work. Okay, so our lesson's going to focus on the parallelogram right here. And if you remember, some of the properties of a parallelogram is that opposite angles are congruent. So you can see these opposite angles are congruent. Opposite sides are parallel and congruent. And remember, the arrows indicate that they're parallel. And another thing that we also know about parallelograms is that their uh, diagonals bisect each other. So that's what we're going to be focusing on today by doing uh, a proof and doing some examples. Okay, a, diag a diagonal of a parallelogram divides the parale parallelogram into two congruent triangles and you can see that right down here. Well, if I can get my pointer over there. It's not wanting to be on the screen. There we go. Okay. Here's our congruent triangles. Of course, we know AC is congruent to AC. And we know that AD is going to be congruent to BC. DC is congruent to AB, right up here at the top. So going by side, 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 we know that these triangles are going to be congruent. Next is that when we're saying that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA, this is a conjecture. And you know what we have when we have a conjecture. Remember that was called indirect, uh, not indirect, I'm sorry, inductive reasoning. And when we have that kind of conjecture, we have to prove it. So here we go with another proof. <laughs> All right. This proof says that we're given ABCD is a parallelogram and we're trying to prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA. Well, I kind of went over this in the previous slide, but we're going to know, let me change over to my pen, we're going to know that AC is congruent to itself using the reflexive property we know that AD is congruent and parallel to BC because we know that about parallelograms. We also know that DC is congruent and parallel to AB because we know the properties of parallelograms. Now then, we also know that DC, if, whoops, it's crazy looking, but if I was to extend DC and make it line DC, and I extend AB on both sides and make that a line, okay? I hope you're with me so far. I'm going to extend these guys, make those lines. Okay, what we have now here is parallel lines cut by a transversal. Your transversal 
is going to be that diagonal AC. Well, when you have that, you know that alternate interior angles are congruent as well, just like that. Okay, let's get started on writing the proof after I've gone through. I've marked up my figure, which is one of the first things that you should do. And when you go through and you mark up your figure, that's going to show you what a lot of your statements and reasons are going to be. Oh, look at me actually making a straight line going all the way down. Okay, so here's my first statement, which is always your given. I'm going to put ABCD is a parallelogram. Whoops, look at Miss Poor putting too many L's in there. I mean, too many R's. Evidently, I forgot how to spell. And the reason for that is it's given. All right, now remember all those things I said when I was marking it up. I said who was congruent, who was parallel. We had parallel lines cut by a transversal, which allows me to use the alternate interior angles theorem, all that stuff. Really, that's all part of my reasons of proving that these two triangles are going to be congruent to each other. Excuse me. So I'm going to start out. I'm going to start out here by saying that line AB or segment AB is parallel to, oh, I wrote that wrong. Excuse me. Let me fix that. I can say that segment AD is parallel to segment BC. And I know that based on the definition of a parallelogram. Oh, now remember the if then, okay? You can say if ABCD is a parallelogram, then AD, segment AD is parallel to segment BC. That's what the if then would look like. Remember your if is a previous statement, your then is the current statement. And then you look and you say, well, how do I know that? And you go back and you look at all your rules and you would find definition of a parallelogram. So step three, let me start out with my if then. Look at what I just did. I wrote four there instead of a three. So I can say if segment AD is parallel to segment BC, then what do I know? Okay, remember what I when I was marking up my picture. I said angle DAC is going to be congruent to angle BCA and angle BAC is going to be congruent to angle DCA. Now let me kind of go back up here and erase some of my trashy markings up here and I'm just doing this so that way you can better see what I'm doing by writing these out. First we said that these guys were parallel to each other. That was in statement two. Okay, and then we're saying that DAC is congruent to BCA. Remember I had that marked up there. We're also saying that BAC is congruent to DCA right there. And then we're saying, okay, how do we know that? Well, remember, if AD and BC are parallel, that makes this line right here, or this segment, oops, this makes this segment AC a transversal. And remember, you've got, whenever you got parallel lines cut by a transversal, that means your alternate interior angles are congruent. All right, remember we learned all of that in unit three. 
Okay, our fourth reason says, okay, if all of these angles are congruent, well, let's, let's back up a little bit. We've proved these angles are congruent. Another thing I said in, um, when I was marking everything up is that I know AC is congruent to AC. Sometimes you just, you gotta write things down. You can't, you can't necessarily use an if-then. You just gotta state what you know. My A's look like little triangles. And remember I told you that, we know that because of the reflexive property uh, of congruence. Okay, last step. If we know, and I'm gonna kinda write that up here, if, if, um, okay, let me, let's see, if number three and four then I know that the triangles are congruent to each other, okay? But the question now is how do I know that? Let me get all this written down. There we go, CDA. I know that because if I look up here at my drawing, I got angle, side, angle that are corresponding that proves that the triangles are congruent to each other. Okay, now then, if you go through the LMS lesson, you're gonna see that there are several more proofs that are gonna prove that the diagonals bisect each other. You're gonna be proven that the opposite angles are congruent and so on. So you need to read through the LMS and make sure you understand those proofs and where they're coming from. Now then, let's go ahead and work some more problems. This is, I've only got one more example, and this is just one of those big puzzles that I love so much. This is ABCD is a parallelogram, and we wanna find the measures of the given angles. Well, I'm gonna go up here right quick, and I'm gonna mark what I already know. I know that this angle right here is 48.9. Those two guys are congruent because of the vertical angle theorem. All right, now if you look, BD is a straight line, which means it measures 180. So if I wanna find the measure of angle five, I say 180 minus 48.9, and that's going to get me 48.9. Point one degrees. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to write that down just in case I have to erase it or something. Alright, now if you look, I know this measure of this angle, I know the measure of this angle right here. Since I know the triangle sum theorem, I can figure out what the measure of angle 4 is. You're just going to say 180 minus 41.5 minus 48.9 and your answer is going to give you the measure of angle 4. So let me key that in. Minus 41.5. Got that keyed in, so I'm going to get 89.6. I'm going to write that down right here. So, if you remember about a parallelogram, I know that this side is parallel to this side, okay? I know that this diagonal DB can be called a transversal. I know angle one is congruent to this angle down here. I know angle two is congruent to angle four. So that means angle two is also 89.6. Oh, I forgot my degree symbols. Okay, now for angles one and three, how am I going to figure those guys out? Okay, in this triangle over here, look here, you got congruent, you got congruent, correct? So that means angle 3 here 
is going to match up with this angle over here, which is 41.5. Now then, we also remember that um, opposite angles are congruent. Another thing that we know about parallelograms is that consecutive we didn't talk about this in today's lesson. We have to remember it from lesson three. Consecutive angles are supplementary. Remember that? So if these angles right here, I subtract that from 180 minus 41.5 minus 29.8. Let me see what that gets me. 180 minus 41.5 minus 29.8 that's going to get me 108 oops 0.7 well these angles are supplementary to these guys over here okay so if I take 108.7 minus what I already know over there, that's going to tell me what the remaining angle is going to equal. And let me tell you what, it's also, I know I'm finding out the measure of angle. Those two squares, all those angles in there are congruent to each other. So if I find out this one angle, I'm going to know what angle one is. So I'm going to take 108.7 minus 89.6 and I get 19.1 there you go and that's how we solved that puzzle it was a little bit tougher than what you may have thought just glancing at it one time and let me tell you we also know that this right here is 29.8 we also know that this angle right here is going to be 19.1 and angle 1 is 19.1. There we go. Alright, so you learned that a diagonal separates a parallelogram into two congruent triangles and that you can use the triangle congruence postulates and theorems to verify properties of a parallelogram. What you should be doing now is going through the LMS Lesson 410, Understanding Quadrilaterals and Complete the Student Guide read through the pages in the reference guide just to make sure you don't need some additional notes because remember you get to use your notes on your quizzes and tests. Complete problems 1, 3, 4, and 6 in your problem set and if you still don't understand the concepts after that you need to contact me or attend TOGA if you have any questions before you complete the 410 quiz and then also make note of any questions you may have that you want to ask me during CC. Uh, that's going to be it for Lesson 410. Thanks for listening.